Hey y'all, I am here with Dr. Jenny Green and we're going to be talking about birth control options. Um, but instead of just diving right into talking about IUC, we want to first look at all the options. So this is kind of be kind of going to be like, I'm going to Dr. Jenny Green and being like, help me. I don't know what to do with myself. And so we're going to figure out what the best thing for me would be and also talk about you know, just general options. Um, so yeah, do you want to go over some? Sure. Of Great. Okay. So this is my empowerment bag. Right. And so the reason I call it that is because I really believe in choice. I think you need to have all the choices and mm. that's what empowers you as a woman because you need those choices. So let's go over these. So Celia, how old are you now? I am 25. And when would you like to get pregnant? Um, if ever, I don't know, like, I want, I want to say 30, but then five years from now, that seems like too early. So like thirties. Okay. <laughs> so, and that's a really important thing for women to think about is when do they want to get pregnant, if ever, right? So for you, sounds like five years, maybe more. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So how important is it to you not to get pregnant right now, Celia? Um, yeah. Unlike my mom who had a kid in grad school, <laughs> I don't think I could do it. Okay. So it's very important. Okay. <laughs> so what I've heard from you is you want a kid in about five, maybe more years. And it's really important to you not to get pregnant right now. Yeah. Okay. Right on. So let's go through some of the typical methods of contraception that maybe some women use. The first is pull out. So some women, um, use pull out as a method to avoid pregnancy. So what pull out is, is where the man has to pull his penis out of the vagina right before he's about to ejaculate. Right. Okay. Now, pull out, if I had a thousand women use that for a whole year, there would be 220 pregnancies. I'm going to show you this number right here. Do you want me to show the camera? Yeah, please? show the yeah. camera. All right. So 220 is that number right there, if you can see that. So 220 pregnancies. And you have to think about why that is. So when he is about to ejaculate, he's probably not thinking about your future and your studies. <laughs> yeah. He's probably thinking, this feels really good. I should stay in here, right? So this is why that fails, okay? The next method is condoms. And I have in my little bag here a sample of all these little things. Mm. So condoms, I think we've probably all seen condoms before. Yeah, so probably. A little condom yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So if I had a thousand women use condoms for a whole year, 180 women would get pregnant. Mm. So for you, you don't want a baby for at least five years and it's really important to you not get, to get pregnant. That might not be yeah. a good method yeah. for you, right? So then we go to pills, patch, and ring. So these are three different methods. So mm. here's a package of pills right here. Here's the birth control patch. And here is the ring, okay? So each of these three methods have two hormones in them, an estrogen and a progestin. Mm -hmm. And that progestin level is about 100 to 150 micrograms a day. And the estrogen, estrogen is the hormone we really worry about in terms of um, heart attack, stroke, high okay. blood pressure, blood clots. So women mm -hmm. who, there are some women who cannot take estrogens at all. Like if you have migraine with aura or you have a history of blood clots, you mm -hmm. cannot take estrogen at all, okay? So basically these three methods are just three different ways to get those two hormones into your body. So with a pill, you're going to swallow a pill the same time every day. Yeah. Now think about that, Celia. You want more than five years. Yeah. That's 13 packs a year. That's 65 packs of birth control. Yeah. I was on the pill for like, since I, from I was 16 to, I don't know, like 20 something. And it was many years. And the whole thing about being the same time, yeah. that's the hardest part. It's like, you can remember to take it the same day, like yeah. every day, but it has to be the same time. I know, Celia, and that's really, really hard. Yeah. And so it typically, it's really hard, <laughs> isn't it? I couldn't do it. Yeah. Okay. So typically with birth control pills, um, we are told that they're over 99% effective. But Celia, that is not true. And I really, really need women mm -hmm. to understand that, okay? Pills, the patch, the patch you put on once a week and you leave it on for the whole week. And the ring, you slip it into your vagina. I'll talk about that in one second. But pills, patch, and ring, if I had a thousand women use those for a whole year, 90 would get pregnant, which means they're 91% effective. Mm -hmm. They're not that 99%. And this is where we're getting so many unintended pregnancies in Canada. Yeah. It's because of birth control pills. Okay. So I just really want women. So is to the know 90 that. women who get pregnant, is it because they're not using it correctly or is it all these women are using it correctly and they're still getting pregnant? So I really never, ever want to tell a woman she's not using it correctly. Okay. Yeah. okay? <laughs> I'm saying she's using it typically okay. because it is so hard. Like yeah. you said, you take so that pill the same time every day. 
think about this. The average age of first sex in Canada is 16 for a woman. Mm. The average age of first baby is 29. So you're not that off if you want 30 <laughs> years later. Okay, so that's 13 years when a woman is in high school, then university, maybe doing her PhD. Mm. Really, really busy, right? You got a social life, you got stuff yeah. going on. It's so hard to take that pill. You have to take this package of pills everywhere yeah. you go. You really do. So, right? Yeah. So that's why it fails 90 out of 1,000 yeah. times. I never judge a woman and say you're not taking it correctly because you are. You're taking it as it suits your life. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But this is where you really need to think about is this the method for you? Do mm. you want to be tied to say, taking a pill at the same time every day? Celia, there are absolutely some women who are awesome at it and who d really do well with pills. But yeah. a lot of women find it really a big burden. Yeah. Okay? Then the last one I want to tell you about was the ring. Now remember, it's also 90 pregnancies per thousand, just like the patches. So the ring, what you do, you slip it up into your vagina and you leave it there for three weeks and then you slip it out. Mm -hmm. And that's how the ring works. Okay. Then the last one here, and I'm going to show you my little card again, my handy dandy card <laughs> that I show all my patients. This is the injection. So this is a needle. You mm -hmm. have to come to the office every 12 weeks to get a needle of a fairly big dose of hormone. Right. Okay? 60 women get pregnant per thousand. Mm. I don't find that many women use this because the biggest side yeah. effects are weight gain, mood change, and acne. Yeah. Not super appealing. No, I agree. <laughs> okay, so then let's go to the other side and I'll show. Um, so these are the IUC. So this is intrauterine contraception. And I really think of intrauterine contraception as freedom, mm. right? I slip it in, you are free from worrying get, about getting pregnant for three, five, or ten years. Yeah, that is awesome. That's huge. Right? <laughs> so they're long acting. They're immediately reversible. So I slip it in, you can't get pregnant. I slip it out. It's an immediate return to your fertility, mm. right? And they're highly effective. So let me look, at, show you these numbers. So a copper, which I'll show you in my bag of empowerment, I have a couple <laughs> of IUCs. So copper, if I had a thousand women use the copper IUD, eight would get pregnant. And if I had the IUSs, which are here, there are three types. If I had a thousand women use the IUS, two would get pregnant. Wow, that's awesome. That is awesome, right? Those are really effective methods. So Those are working in my favor. <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, right? So Five years or more. I noticed that you say IUC, IUD, and IUS. So okay. can you explain what the difference is? Yeah, right that's a good question. So IUC are just intrauterine contraceptives. So it's okay. kind of the umbrella term for right. all of them. And then IUD refers to more of the device. So mm. here is a copper device in the tube that I used to insert it. And Celia, I'll show you how I insert it, okay? Because it's okay. really not at all as horrible as most women think. Okay, so that's the copper. Mm -hmm. You can hold it, Celia. Right on. It's so little. Oh, you can take two. Oh, that's that's a picture. I'll put it back in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Isn't it tiny? So it's just like a little coiled copper thing. Yeah, so the, coi the copper is coiled around. So how that works... Is that copper. why it's called the coil in the Yeah, UK? exactly. That's why it's called the coil. Yeah. So the copper is a spermicide. So it mm. damages sperm, so the sperm can't swing properly, so you can't get pregnant. The other thing it does, now look at this. I have a uterus here. I mean, I have my own uterus, <laughs> and you have yours. But this is a plastic one. Okay, right on. So I slip this in, and I'll show you how I do it. So it stays right there, and the copper changes that lining of the uterus, makes mm. it so that if sperm does happen to be able to get through, it can't implant in there. Okay. So you can't get pregnant. Okay, so that's why so few women, eight out of a thousand, get pregnant with this. Yeah, and that doesn't put any hormones in your body at all. No yeah. hormones at all. So some women really love that idea of no yeah. hormones. Now, the drawback with the coil or the copper IUD is it can make your periods heavier and crampier, especially mm. the first few months, but some women really afterwards. So this is really important as a doctor. I really talk to women about their periods and what are their yeah. periods like. Because if your periods are already heavy and crampy, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about putting mm. this in, okay? So that takes us now to the IUS. So there are three types of IUSs. So IUS, the reason it's called that, to mm. get back to your question, IUS again is under the umbrella term of IUC. Mm -hmm. IUS is a system. So what it has, I can't take this one out because this is loaded and I, and I really like to use it. Yeah. But if you look here, it has a little reservoir. Okay. okay? Yeah. And that reservoir is where there's the hormone in there. So it mm. does have hormone. And some women say to me, I don't want any hormone. And I say, okay, but it's really important to me that you listen to this. So this yeah. has no estrogen. So your ladies okay. who can have estrogen, awesome. Yeah. Okay. What it does have is a progestin. Now the progestin, the reason it's in there is to help with your cramping and to help with your bleeding. So you get mm, less cramping nice. and less bleeding. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Okay. Now, the other thing that's really important, Celia, and this goes back to, remember I said some women say, I don't want any hormones. Yeah. 
With this one, you get less than one third of 1% of the dose in birth control pills. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So and it does a better job. It does a better job. Exactly. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Because when you take pills, patch or ring, mm. those hormones are all over your body. Okay. They put your ovaries to sleep. So your ovaries aren't really right. working. That's one okay. of the mechanisms they work. With this little IUS, which I slip into your uterus and leave it just like that, those hormones are primarily acting locally in mm. the wall of the uterus. So how they work so you don't get pregnant, they change that lining. And in fact, okay. they make it a little bit thinner. And that's why less women, oh. more women get less bleeding. Right. And some women, in fact, don't get a period at all. Yeah. And you know, some women say to me, but Dr. Green, isn't that bad not to get a period? <laughs> And I love that question because you're right. As women, right, we have this feeling we have to get a period every month. Mm. That's so important. Because mm. if we're not getting a period, it means we're pregnant or something's wrong. Yeah. Right? And what it can mean is that lining is getting really, really thick. Now, when you have an IUS, remember that's not happening because that hormone is staying there really locally. Here, I'm going to show you a camera. Okay. Yeah. It's staying right in there. So that hormone is acting locally to thin down those walls mm. so that you don't get a period. Wow. Okay. In fact, when you're on birth control pills, you're not getting a period either. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah, I did know that. Yeah. It's like a fake period. It's, yeah, <laughs> so what it is is when you take birth control pills, you take a pill every day and that pill makes the lining really thin mm. or steady. Okay. As soon as you start your sugar pills, the lining of the uterus says, hey, there's no hormone to keep me in place and so it lets go and you get a bleed. Mm. If you didn't take your sugar pills, and you just start in another pack right away, which is fine to do. Yeah. You wouldn't get it. You wouldn't bleed either. Okay. Right. That's called a withdrawal bleed. Well, with the with the IUSs, mm -hmm. we don't withdraw them every three weeks. Good thing, eh? That we don't pull them out every. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can handle that. No, really. Okay. So that's the IUS. So there are three types. I'm going to just explain to you the difference because women all often ask me what the difference is. So yeah. I'll draw this and then we'll show them. Okay. So there's the IUS twenty. And the reason it's called that is because in her reservoir, she has enough hormone to give you about 20 micrograms a day of that hormone. Okay. Okay. Remember, locally in your uterus. Then there's the IUS 12, which is right here. Mm -hmm. And then there's the IUS 8. So what I've drawn is this. Remember oh, that bar, bar diagram? Yeah, <laughs> the bar diagram from grade 10 math. <laughs> you know it coming in. Okay? okay, so here's 20 micrograms a day. Here's 12 micrograms a day. And here's 8 micrograms a day. So what does that mean? What that means is, Celia, by about a year, the same percentage of women will not have a period. Mm. So 20%, just because this has a little tiny bit more hormone, so more okay. women will not get a period. Yeah. About 12% will not, and about 8% will not have a period. Okay. Okay. So that's the difference between the three. The other difference, and this is also really important, the IUS 20 was originally made for women who've had a baby. Mm. So their uterus is a little tiny bit bigger. Right. I can still put an IUS 20 in a woman who's never had a baby. She just might have a little bit more cramping. Yeah, so yeah. I have that IUS oh, 20, yeah. and which I like my odds that are higher to not have a period, right. although I still have mine. I got it a year ago, Okay. Um, so I'm like not sure. Do you think it'll go away? It can, it so could still with go? increasing time, more and more women. Okay. So this is only at one year, right? Yeah. So by two, three, four years, less uh, and less women get that I like my odds. Yeah, yeah, you like your odds on that one. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was pretty painful. Like the insertion itself was painful okay. for me, but it wasn't really bad at all after. I just okay. had like a heating pad on me for the rest of the day. Uh, okay. But um yeah, that's one thing that someone asked me to ask is about the pain and whether the pain is only an insertion, okay. if it's always an insertion, and afterwards if there's pain associated. Okay, so can I tell you about how I insert it? Just yes. so that you yeah, know that the Okay. Yeah. So the first thing I do when you come and see me, we talk about this, we make sure this is what you want. And if mm. you want this, I'm going to give you something to help you with pain. So I usually give Advil or ibuprofen yeah. about 600 milligrams a day, uh, right before the insertion. Okay. Or I can give naproxen. So whichever one the woman prefers. Acetaminophen doesn't tend to work. Okay. okay. So I really like the ibuprofen. Um, that's a good dose of ibuprofen, but I give that right before I put it. And then what I do... I slip two fingers in the vagina like this because I want to feel where your uterus is because every mm. woman's different. Some it points up, some it points this way, some it points back. Okay. Then I take the speculum and we all know what this is, right? This little <laughs> speculum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, not one of those. Okay. I slip it in just like that and I open it up till I see your cervix. So what's your cervix look like, Celia, at the end of that speculum is like a donut. 
Okay, with a little hole. A in tiny it. little hole. Oh yeah, <laughs> just like a donut. So what I'm looking at is this, that little donut with the hole. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that hole is actually the opening into the cervix. Okay, which it lets me into the uterus. Mm -hmm. So what I do, and this is all through here. Okay. I clean off that cervix, and I do a swab sometimes if I'm worried about sexually transmitted infections, yeah, okay. chlamydia and gonorrhea. Yeah. I do that, I do that swab. And then what I do, I have this really special tool. So what I do, I'll show you this way, okay, so everybody can see. I slip this through that hole, which leads me into the cervix and then into the uterus. Because mm. I want to measure how deep you are from the outside of your cervix to the top of your uterus. Oh, so it's like a ruler. That's exactly like yeah. Now this is the part, Celia, where some women get cramping. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I so, remember. Yeah. <laughs> some women really feel it, but that's really the vast minority of women. Mm. I would say most women say to me, it feels like a period cramp. Okay. And some women don't feel it at all. Okay. And then I pull it out. And that's the worst part of the whole procedure. Mm. It's pretty awesome. So then, and I'll show you here with this copper one because I can, I can release this one. This IUS here, I can't release it because the strings are stuck in there. So I'll show ah. you with this one, okay? But they're both the same. Let me just put the, you pulled the strings out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I really wanted to get a look I at know, it. I know, you did. <laughs> okay, so I have to load it into the loader. And so this is all in my box. I can show you a little bit with this one. I just can't release it, okay? Mm. So how I do with this one, as I know how deep you are, which on this uterus, I think I measured six, yeah, okay. So then I take this and I slip it in and I release the arm. So you see those arms release there. Yeah. And then what I do, I slip it to the top of your uterus and I can't, like I said, I can't release this one. So that's why. Yeah. I'm Let me show you. But it stays thing. in there. It stays in there, but I can't do that on this one. So let's just quickly do it with this one. I slip it in, I release it. And then I pull out my tubes huh. and ta-da, stays there. in there. Now, people say, are those strings going to hang out? <laughs> hang hang all the way yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> and some women worry about that, right? That it's going to hang out like a tampon. It does not. So what I do, and I, and I can't cut this one because I need to keep it for my demos for my patients. So what yeah. I do, Celia, I cut the strings about two to three centimeters. Mm. So here you can feel them. Feel them? Yeah. Right? So with time, and here's the opening to your vagina. So it looks right. like deep inside you. Okay? Yeah. So with time... Those are going to get softer and they're mm. going to curl up around your cervix so that penis going in doesn't feel them. Right. Now, he may feel them initially just because they're a little bit stiff initially. Mm. But like I said, they get softer and softer just like that so he won't feel them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. And then when it comes time, so let's say you're coming back to see me and you say, I'm ready to have that baby, Jenny. And I said, okay, ready? One, two, three. There you go. And really? Just, and off you go. That's, that's how fast awesome. it is. It's not wow. even a second. Okay. That's amazing. <laughs> that, that's amazing. So those are the IUCs. So... You told me you wanted a baby five, maybe more years, and that was really important to you to get pregnant. I've gone over all the choices. What do you think? Yeah, I think the five year, one of the five year ones okay. of these. And definitely hormonal for me. I yeah. mean, as the hormonal birth control that I took, I mostly was taking it originally for acne. Okay. So it kind of helped me in that way, although okay. it didn't really help my acne that much. But um, yeah, I, I'm kind of a afraid of the copper one because I've just heard period. so many things yeah. from people I know who have it who okay. are in a lot of pain every oh. month and um yeah so I think it sounds like a really good option I mean obviously I have it for a year now and it has been a really good option oh, for me great. I love it yeah that's super so maybe your friends you know you should say to them because often why women will choose the copper is because they're worried about that hormone. And I yeah. think that's where it's really important to remember that less than one third of 1%. That's yeah. so, so low. So it's just because you might have had a bad experience with Absolutely. the hormones and birth control pills, it doesn't it's mean not, that it'll not, translate. You, you can't yeah. compare the two. Yeah. yeah. That's really interesting. Um, okay. What else do people want me to ask you? So we went over how it was inserted, yeah. how long it lasts, yeah. um, how reliable it is. Right on. So are there any side effects of these other than the copper one? So, so we talked about the copper one. So these ones, um, now it's not a treatment for acne. So a woman who's coming okay. to me for a treatment specifically for acne, this is not because it doesn't mm. have that estrogen. Right, okay? okay. So that's where birth control pills come in. Yeah. Um, so some of them, when I put this in initially, Remember, when I put it in initially, there's going to be a little rise in your hormone level, mm. and then that comes down. So initially, you might get a few hormonal side effects, so okay. tender breasts, a few pimples, but those really do go away, and the vast majority of women 
are totally fine with it. Mm. When we look at satisfaction rates, so women, how satisfied they are with their contraceptions, more than 85% of women at one year are totally happy with their device. I, I totally believe that. Uh, yeah, I can't <laughs> tell you 100. I cannot tell you 100% of women, yeah. but I can tell you 80, 85. Yeah, and speaking of the, the people who are not happy with it, yep. I had a comment from someone saying that their friend had it, they called it reject from them, okay. but that's probably not what it's actually doing. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> so when you get, let's say you, you, come, you go to see your healthcare provider and you really want to get into uterine contraception, it's really important that you, I, uh, that you understand the benefits, but also the risks, because mm. they're all risks. And the risks of those really have to do with the insertion procedure. Okay. okay. IUCs do not cause infection, okay? okay? Period, they do not. However, once I insert it, there is a risk of infection in the first 20 days after I slip it in. Okay. And that's purely because, remember, I'm going from the vagina, which has bacteria, into mm. the uterus, which does not. So it's the insertion procedure, it's not the IUC itself. Okay. Okay. Now you asked about, we call that expulsion. So right, what expulsion. that is, yeah, expulsion. <laughs> so what that is, is the uterus just decides it doesn't like it for whatever reason. It's higher risk to be pushed out or expulsed in the first couple of months after mm. it's put in. That's the highest risk. That risk is about 3%. Okay, and some devices. people, that's just their body just won't It's just their that. body. I will try it. Let's say they come for a copper. I might try the copper twice just to mm. see. If I put in a five year, I might go to a smaller five year to see if okay. that helps. So I just try yeah. different things. And then I really, if the second one gets rejected, I really say, let's try that IUS because that I know initially they didn't yeah. want the hormones, but I really encourage them to try that because sometimes that relaxes the uterus enough just to keep it in. Mm. So yeah, it does happen. That is one of the risks. Yeah. Okay. And um, we talked a bit about, or yeah, I think we did, about blood clots and different reasons why someone would want to consider this over, say, the birth control pills, okay. which I know are riskier when it comes to blood clots. Right, so you're talking somebody who has a history of blood yeah. clots or a family history? I think so, yeah. Okay. This was a, a comment that I had, yeah. Okay, so there are definitely some women who cannot have estrogens, like I said. So mm. women migraine with aura, she right. cannot take estrogens, but she can certainly use an IUS or an IUD, either okay. one, okay? If somebody has a family history of blood clots or a personal history of blood clots, I think it's really important for them to talk to their doctor mm -hmm. about all the different options. Um, copper IUD is definitely an option unless they have heavy periods or they're bleeding a lot because mm. if they're on a blood thinner, they're going to bleed a lot, right? Yeah. Um, you can still use an IUS, but the woman has to understand that there may be a slight risk of recurrence of that blood clot. Now you have to talk with your healthcare provider and balance that with the risk of pregnancy because if you get pregnant, yeah. your risk of that happening is really a lot greater. So yeah. I don't want to tell them what to do in the video, right. but just yeah. to go talk to their healthcare provider. Yeah, it could definitely be an option. Yeah. Okay. And um, another specific point that someone pointed out to me is that um, someone who has a nickel allergy or some kind of contact dermatitis is that what you call yeah, it so, so we hear that a lot yeah right? people put in an earring or a belly button ring yeah. and they get their skin gets really red that tends to be a contact dermatitis and it's usually a reaction to nickel <clears throat> they can absolutely use a copper iud or an ius okay uh, the ius two of them have a little silver ring on them um, those are totally fine okay yeah, that's a good reason not to yeah. use those um and the last question that i have is so I originally started using birth control pills, like I said, for acne, yeah. and you said that IUC is not used for treating acne, no. but are there other reasons that are not birth control related? So like if someone is queer and they're not having sex that can get them pregnant or something like that, yeah. is there a reason why they would still want to consider this? Absolutely. So, and I've put in a number of them for yeah. women who just have really heavy, painful periods yeah. and they don't want to take a pill at the same time every mm -hmm. day. So yeah, absolutely, I slip an IUS in, yeah. no problem. So it helps with pain and makes your period go away in a lot of cases? Yeah, which... yeah. or lighter <laughs> for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely gone lighter for me, it just hasn't gone away completely. Oh, just... You're hoping. But my mom had an IUD, or she had a, a few, I think, over her yeah. lifetime, and she said she just, it never went away for her, so maybe I'm just... I don't know. I don't know which type she had, right? Yeah. Do you know? So I no, I don't. You can ask her that. Yeah. Mom, Mom, now that you know, <laughs> which type did you have? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's perfect. I feel like I know a lot more about it. I mean, I didn't really know that much going into getting mine. It was just sort of like, okay, I'll just All right. get this. So I feel 
more confident in my decision now oh, a year great. later. The only thing I, I think is really important to say, remember, IUCs do not protect you against sexually transmitted infections, right? right? Yeah. That's really important. So if you have one partner and you're both free of infections, he doesn't need to wear a condom. Mm. He can ejaculate inside. He doesn't need to pull out. It works. It's yeah. really effective. However, if you have multiple partners or mm. you're in an open relationship, you really need to use a barrier protection condoms if it's sex with a male so that you don't get STIs because yeah. these do not protect you against that. Yeah, so that really, is important, really important. important. Yeah, for really sure. Important. Okay, well, All right. yeah, this All right. is great. Thank great. you so much. Yeah, good. <laughs> Hope you like my bag. Yeah, I love it. I feel empowered. Oh, yes. good. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All right. Okay.